So what do you get when you mix long distance, military service, two languages, and two countries? And me. A five-year relationship with a Korean guy. So, uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Becky. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my five-year relationship I had with a Korean guy, and he's Korean, Korean, totally Korean. I'm half Korean. Actually, he was my first boyfriend. I had never dated anyone before him, and I was. 20, I think, 20 years old. We met in university. He was an exchange student from Korea, and so I remember we met because at my school, we had a really small Korean community. When one of my omnis introduced me to this new Korean guy that I hadn't met yet, and he was dressed in a suit at school, at lunch, and I remember that really stood out to me. We were in the lunch room, and we were putting the dishes away, and then he comes and asks me, oh, how old are you? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm 20 years old. And he goes this, he goes, yes. Because it really was showing he was so happy because he was oppa. And so we started dating pretty soon after that. It was a couple months later. And we ended up dating for five years, literally exactly five years. The day we broke up was our five year anniversary. The experience, this five year relationship was quite, I think a lot of dramatic things happen. So we graduated from university. And then he had to go back to military, actually. But he wanted to, he wanted to stay together. He was pretty set on me. And so it was about a year he pushed back his military service. And he was working lots of odd jobs during the summer. But that was a really, I mean, it was a great time. But it was also really difficult. And finally he came to Korea because he couldn't push off his military service any longer. And so I, this is kind of like impending doom. You know the military service is coming. And I came to Korea a little bit later after him. We had a great time living in Korea, you know. And so we'd see each other as much as we could. And then he went to military. It's, it's not easy. Military, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, and I feel like they changed. I remember he became quite different during those two years I think he was in service. I was there on the day that he actually went into the military. I was there when he shaved his head and uh, kissed his mom goodbye, but I wasn't gonna see him for three months. Yeah, and then I remember when they released the first photo and I saw him in his uniform and he had become like team captain or something. You could write these, you could write handwritten letters and they would mail it, so it was very old school. And so I would write him letters, I think every evening. We survived. We survived military time. I used to tell my friends that he was perfect. I used to always tell my friends, oh, he's the perfect guy. Like, he's so loyal, he's so kind, he's so faithful. And he has all those things. I see a little bit now that I was trying to kind of, like, fit myself into the partner he needed, like the girl he wanted. Um, he's very upright. He's a very upright guy, very honest. I think some things I would notice like when we would go hang out with his friends, for example, the his old friends. I wasn't Becky. I was I didn't really like hanging out with his friends just because because I wasn't really there. I I think he was trying to find where he was going in his life. I was trying to find where I was going in my life. And our paths were kinda of going this way. I had a circle of friends here in Korea. He had his circle of friends in Korea, and they never mingled. I should have seen this as a sign that our two individual or personal worlds couldn't really blend together very well. And I was working in entertainment and models, music, fashion, and he wasn't. In fact, he was still looking for what he wanted to do. And I really believed in him. I really fully, I still believe in him. It ended up where he wanted to move to Jeju Island to work at a startup, right? It's not too far, he said. We can easily see each other back and forth from Jeju Island to Seoul. And things just kind of... I recognized that my life here was pretty fulfilled. You know, I felt very whole. I felt I was achieving things that I wanted to do. I felt very happy and, and I had a good church. I had good friends. And I just recognized that he wasn't a part of those things. So it was kind of this contrast of my career, my future versus this guy. 
And obviously, you can see what I chose. You know, I don't regret because it was a really wonderful five-year relationship and I learned a whole lot. It's funny when I look on his Instagram because <laughs> it's all food in Jeju Islands. And I just envision my... I can't see his photos because his face is not really on there. But I envision, oh my gosh, is he becoming like... <laughs> I tried. I tried to be sweet. I tried to be helpful. But in my own feeling. We spoke mostly in English and Korean. It was, it was like a really good blend of both. And when I look back over my text messages, I see that a good percentage of it is all in Korean. And also a lot of it is... You know, him checking in on me. Where are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? Who is this person? Why are you late, out late so at night? It can be a little bit not overbearing, if you like it. <laughs> I would say overall experience of dating Korean guys, he is so much nunchi. <gasps> this is it. Korean guys have nunchi. Not all. But really, he had nunchi. He knew how to deal with it. Like, it's something like, like how to deal with, like, I guess your like my sensitivities or my emotions um, he dealt with it in a very good way it's funny looking back at it now I still have my letters from the military service too and sometimes I look at that but I have to wonder like if we met now in now in Korea me as who I am him as who I am and we didn't have all this history in the past if we met now I really wonder if if ever we would have gotten back together or would have started dating yeah, if you have ever dated a Korean guy or a Korean girl, if you've ever thought about that, you have questions or you're curious, I hope that you will ask. You can feel free to ask any questions in the comments below and also share your own experiences. So that's just kind of the brief story of dating a Korean guy for five years. Thank you for listening to that and watching this video. If you have your own story or your own questions, you can leave it in the comments below and do let me know if there are any specific topics that you are interested in hearing about. So we hope to hear from you soon and catch you later. We are The Happy Project.